Hey everybody, welcome back to Sam's Doing Stuff. What am I doing today? Well, in a previous video I installed this transfer switch so I can power my house or certain circuits, essential circuits in my house with a gas generator. Well, the gas generator sits outside obviously and I had the intention of having this inlet inside the house because we want to eventually use a battery backup system along with our gas generator. Now, let me answer some questions that we had in the comments. The attraction to using battery backup rather than gas backup, well, I shouldn't say rather than, I would say in addition to, the, the real draw for, <laughs> the draw for battery backup is that it's instant, it's quiet, it is zero maintenance, and it's there immediately. As a matter of fact, if you have uh, the, the, the hubs, the, the automatic hubs, instead of a manual transfer switch, it will switch over automatically and draw from the battery if there's a power outage. So it's a real convenience. Now, the other aspect to it that's also at least very attractive to me is I can create electricity for a battery system with solar. I cannot create gasoline. I cannot create natural gas. If things really, really got bad and our entire substructure or whatever, our, our infrastructure, I should say, shuts down, um, then yes, I can create electricity with solar. So it's something to think about, I'm just saying. Anyway, that's not gonna happen right away. So instead of running a cord through a window into here like I was doing before, I wanna move this inlet to the outside. Now this is the box that comes with the kit that I bought. This is a Reliance Industries kit, or Reliance Controls uh, is the name of the company. And it uh, mounts outside. So all I did was I took the inlet out of this and I mounted it directly into the transfer switch. And here's our transfer switch right here. And as you can see, everything right now is set to line. So all of these switches are down to line, which means that all of the power from the grid is coming down through our transfer switch and then back into our house panel, okay? So this is hot. There is active electricity in this box right now. And before I pull this front panel off to remove this inlet, I'm gonna need to turn off the main breaker. All right, we're just gonna take this panel off here. Now you're gonna hear some beeping in the background. That's one of my battery backups for the internet. Just remove these two screws. We're gonna set those aside and don't lose them. Open this up. There we go. So before I go pulling all of these wires out, I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture. There we go, now I know where the wires go. I'm gonna remove the screws from all of these, and they should all come out of there very easily. Next, we need to take our uh, inlet out of this. So we're just gonna remove those three screws and remove the inlet from the panel. All right, now that you've removed those screws, you can just take your inlet directly out of there, just like that. Now that the inlet is removed, I'm not going to replace this panel quite just yet, but I am going to put this little cover plate back on the front. It just takes one screw. And that is the way the front panel originally came in the box. Next, I'm gonna loosen this bottom screw here, and this front plate comes right off the box just like that. You've got a ground wire that's connected to the box inside. Go ahead and set that aside. I'm gonna take my inlet and I'm gonna put it back into the box that it originally came in on this front plate. So take the screws that you removed from here that you set to the side, and those are the screws that are gonna to use to put this back together. Okay, and now, that is the way the inlet box originally came in the packaging. Let's go outside. Okay, I bought a section of three quarter inch 
Schedule 40 PVC conduit, electrical conduit. And I'm going to measure off about a six inch piece here. From that same piece of three quarter inch schedule 40 PVC conduit, I'm cutting off about a six foot section. All right, so I went to Home Depot and I bought about a hundred dollars worth of supplies. Mainly the biggest expense was this number eight wire. Now the instructions in the Reliance Controls transfer switch say you can use number 10 wire, but I am gonna use number eight. Um, I had them cut off the length I already measured. I knew I needed about 12 feet. So they cut off about 12 feet. Now, if you're gonna put your inlet a whole lot closer to your transfer switch, that'll save you some money. So anyway, I've got my wire, got my inlet right here. And I also went, and I got this at Home Depot also. These are liquid tight uh, fittings. Um, they're by Southwire. Anyway, these are the type of fittings I'm going to be using. They have a rubber gasket and a foam gasket. This will definitely help to prevent any type of water, rain, snow, leakage, bugs getting in there. So that's the type of fitting I'm using. All right, so we take our inlet apart. We're just going to need the back section right now. We're going to pop out the knockout on the back. I'm using three quarter inch fittings, so pop the whole thing out. There's the knockout right there on the bottom back. So now I'm gonna take this fitting apart, simply take the nut, plastic nut off the front, like that. I'm gonna feed it through the box, just like that, and put the nut back on. I'm gonna get my uh, adjustable knuckle busters here, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good solid turn, because we want that good and tight. So like I say, no water or anything gets in there. Now I'm just gonna take a couple of blocks of wood here, set them down so I protect the box. That, I'm gonna take that six inch piece of three quarter inch PVC conduit and uh, we're gonna tap it onto the back of this. That ought to do it. So this is what we're ending up with right here. We've got that fitting going through the box, watertight, and then this piece is gonna go through our wall to the inside of the house where the wire's gonna go through. So now our box is ready to go onto the wall on the outside of the house. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-wire this inlet. I'm gonna take approximately six inches of the insulation off the outside of this. Be very careful that you don't cut so deep that you uh, cut the wires inside. I'm just gonna score the outside of this insulation. I like to use my pocket knife because it's just the right amount of sharpness. There it goes. Okay, so pull the plastic insulation off the outside. That's gonna give you three wires in the ground. Now, just FYI if you don't know this, this is three wire. Even though it really has four wires on the inside, it has a ground, red, white, and black. That is called three wire. If it's just ground, white, and black, then it's called two wire. Okay, I stripped about an inch, a little more maybe, of insulation off the ends of those. We're gonna go ahead and wire this into the box. Referring to my picture here so I remember what wire goes where. Okay, got it all pre-wired here. So white goes to W, that makes sense. Ground goes to G, that makes sense but black goes to Y and red goes to X. Okay, now we're outside the house and I've marked with an X exactly where I want to mount the box. I already measured inside to make sure there isn't anything like a pipe or a wire or something that I'm gonna run into. So I measured then from the outside and I know exactly where to drill. The OD on this pipe is actually an inch and an eighth, inch and 16th almost, uh, but I don't have that exact size bill, so. It, 
I don't have that exact size bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill it a 7 8 inch hole and then ream it out. Now we're gonna put a bunch of silicone around the hole. And I'm also gonna put a layer around the outside of this thing. Stick that in the hole. Just like that. Beautiful. Might as well make sure it's perfect, right? Okay, now I'm using Simpson inch and a quarter SD screws. These will not rust. That's solid. And now, because I pre-wired, because I pre-wired my uh, inlet box, all that's left to do is to feed the wire through the hole and screw it in place. I don't know if it's necessary to connect this ground here. I mean, it's there, so I figure it must be there for a reason. All right, now all we can do is just uh, slide this box into place, get that down on there securely, and tighten this bottom screw. There we go. Robert, your mother's brother, you got an inlet. I don't know that this is 100% necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna put some silicone around the outside behind this box. Some of you guys might think, well, that's not necessary. Some of you might think, well, yeah, of course that's necessary. It's a good thing you did it. Can't have too much silicone. Okay, we're inside and you can see pretty clearly where that little six inch piece of conduit came through and the wire's coming through. All right, plenty of wire to come in here and reach the transfer switch. Next, we're gonna take out the knockout on this side of the box. A little trick for knockouts. Um, they all come with different size rings as to how much you want to use. Um, I want to use the three quarter inch ring, of course. Uh, so there's one more ring on the outside of that. If you take your pair of pliers and if you can reach in and pinch the edge of the uh, piece you don't want to knock out, that'll help prevent you from knocking out too much. Okay, we're getting there. All right, next step. We're gonna take that piece of conduit that we cut outside, that longer piece, and uh, gonna feed this wire down through it. The conduit, you have to check your own local codes and see if it requires conduit inside and out. But I think it's a good idea. It protects the wire. If somebody's down here working, you know, they're not going to accidentally hit this and, uh, you know, short out the wire or something. So it's just a good idea. All right, so we got our conduit fed in and now we have a 90 degree, the same type of fitting that I used before. That's that, uh, what are they called? Weather tight or uh, liquid tight, liquid tight. That's what it is. Anyway, it's a 90 degree and it's gonna fit on the end of that PVC. So we're gonna feed the wire through that next. There we go. All right, we're only gonna need Let's see here. Well, let's give it plenty. Give it plenty to work with here. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Okay, that's enough. Now, we're gonna take it and attach it here to the end of our conduit. So slide the conduit down to it, and it should just fit inside, just like that. Nice, clean fitting. All right, now we're gonna take the uh, nut off of this end. Slide it over the wire. Gonna feed our wire in through here, the side. Line that up right in the hole like that. Put our nut back on. My dad has told me sometimes you take a flathead screwdriver and just push, there we go, yep, he was right, he's always right. That 
is definitely tight enough, especially inside. This is not going to get weather, so it doesn't have to be rain tight. So the next thing I'd like to do is just make sure this stays nice and straight. Let's make sure we're straight as we can be. Well, it probably only needs one, but two would be better, right? Nice. I'm happy with that. Very happy. Okay, the last thing we need to do, of course, is uh, to wire this together. So all we're gonna do is connect white to white, red to red, black to black, green to green, or green to ground, um, and uh, that'll be it. So I'm gonna take as much of this insulation off as I can. Now, once again, I am not a licensed electrician, but someone in the comments when I wired this transfer switch in said it was a good idea to uh, put some electrician's tape around your wire nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and take his advice. It certainly can't hurt. Okay, I got these tucked in here about as neatly as I can. So we're gonna now take our front plate and we're gonna put those tabs back in up there. Push this into place. Take these two screws that we saved from before. Try and get those started without dropping them. There we go. There's one. And there's two. All right, should be good to go. Okay, that's a nice, neat, watertight install. Nothing is in danger of getting damaged. It's all the way it should be. So, next thing to do, turn the power back on. There we go. I'm happy about that. No sparks, no trip breakers. Nothing crazy. Nope, we're good. So now, of course, you should test your systems, and I'll be testing this every month just to make sure the generator works and all of the uh, transfer switches work and everything is good to go. This is a very nice, clean setup. I really like the way this Reliance Controls transfer switch, manual transfer switch, never can backfeed into the system, so there's no danger of that. When you switch over from line to generator, it's a clean cut and it disconnects whatever power might be coming from the grid. So when the power does come back on, you're never at risk of backfeeding the grid. It's a very, very good system. And now with the inlet on the outside of the house, I don't have to worry about running cables through any windows or anything like that. I just plug in outside and uh, all of the exhaust and everything stays out there. We're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time I am doing more stuff. See you then.